The reactions to the F rating have been astronomical. So um, I came up with it at the festival in 2014 and thought maybe there'd be a little bit of local press, but there wasn't. There was a huge amount of international press. Um, So it really seemed to grab the public imagination. And because of that, in the following year, in 2015, we invited all of the independent cinemas and film festivals in the UK to F-rate their programme. So there are now coming up more than 70, I think, organisations who use the F-rating to highlight films directed and written by women. And then in 2017, IMDb, which is, of course, the largest film website in the world, added it as a keyword. So that means that you can now search F-rated on IMDb and get a list of 23,000 films, which again is fantastic because it's a really easy way for people to find their way to films directed by women. And what's really lovely about the IMDb listings is that the variety of films is, of course, phenomenal. So there's every type of film you could possibly imagine is in there because, of course, women have directed every kind of film. It's always hard to say this about something that you yourself have created, but what do you think people are reacting to? Why do you think now is the time for this sort of system? I think that in the 80s and 90s, um, there was a feeling that feminism was done, that it was it was kind of, we had equality, women could work in the same roles as men, Um, organisations like the BBC and other public broadcasting companies across Europe all signed agreements that they would have equal opportunities. Um, Everybody made forms which said, are you male, female, are you disabled? What would you define your your, um, race as? And all that kind of stuff. And then everybody seemed to kind of sit back and assume that those changes were going to happen. And of course, especially in the film industry, those changes really didn't happen. And it's become increasingly clear that actually we need to do something about it. We can't, we can't just depend on women being brilliant because that's clearly not enough. And, you know, in light of all of the Weinstein, Me Too, Time's Up, um, it's clear to everybody now what a sexist industry the film industry is. There's a piece in The Guardian today by Andrew Pulver about the Cannes lineup uh, post Weinstein. He made the point that Cannes, by holding on to its love of tradition and holding on to its devotion to film history, is holding on to an extremely male, if not chauvinistic, culture. And I wondered what you felt we could do about that, that so much of film, film history and film culture... Um, is embedded in this idea of the male auteur and the male talent and how do we ever move away from that while still paying respect to the film history that brought us such great art at the same time? I think it's a really difficult question and it is really interesting that at the beginning of cinema women were massively involved both in, in the kind of development of the technology that makes films and in the making of films and it was only when it became a high status job and he had huge amounts of money um, that it suddenly became about the auteur and the auteur was definitely white and male. Um, So it, it is interesting and what we do, especially what we do with the abusive men that have made films that people love and that are part of our cinematic history, I think is a really complicated question. It's not one I can answer. I think it's I think it's brilliant that we are finally having those conversations about what do we value and how do we value it and how do we treat it. And I think there are no simple answers. The Harvey Weinstein story is, in a sense, a kind of a singular thing, obviously, and that it, it's, it's a, it seems like it's marking a sea change. And it's also an international story. But it really interested me with the F rating and the F rated festival that you're holding, the F rated day, that um, you're acting on a local level to to check to affect that problem. And I wondered if that was a point of the day that you're putting together, um, if you could tell us a bit about that and um, whether it's important for us to remember that there will be big stories like the Weinstein thing but the kind of day-to-day acts such as putting on festivals like this are the important thing as well. Yeah so the F-rated day is on the 20th of May in Comedia in Bath and is a fantastic day. It actually covers far more than films so we've got comedians, politicians, uh, authors, filmmakers, uh, 
artists. It covers everything and is all about championing women and amplifying women's voices. The two very filmic things that are happening are, first of all, we've got a panel where we are going to be examining all of these things. So looking at the opportunity which exists at the moment in the film industry. So post Weinstein, in, in the light of Me Too and Time's Up, where can we go next and how can we make changes? We've got our only man of the day is coming to that panel, so Ken Loach, work permitting. He's our token male, so he predominantly works with a female producer. In I, Daniel Blake, he had two female editors and the reason he had two was because they both had young children, so they job shared. So interesting to talk to him about how, as an influential man in the film world, how he can make changes and the changes that he can and is planning to make. Um, Kate Hardy, who is a director, writer and actor, is chairing the panel and she's always been passionate about equality in the film industry and always campaigned against the abuse that happens in the industry, both on screen and off screen. Um, Then we've also got Jennifer Smith of the BFI. She's the head of diversity. There's also Anna Higgs, who used to run the digital aspect of Film 4. And we've got Joy Guerrero, who is a young producer. Um, And I'm very interested in hearing from her what her experience in the industry has been. And then in the evening, we've got a special screening of Frida, which, of course, um, Selma Hayek managed to get made uh, with Harvey Weinstein and despite Harvey Weinstein. So I'm sure you saw the amazing article that she wrote about it being her passion project and she was desperate to have Harvey Weinstein as the producer to have it as a Miramax film. So she really campaigned and fought to make that happen. And then of course he Weinsteined her um, and at the time, she didn't know where to go with that because he was her hero, and then here he was treating her appallingly, not respecting her because she was female. She wanted to be seen as an artist, just as Frida Kahlo did. Um, so, yeah, it feels like a really timely revisit to that film. I was wondering where you felt the ceiling was for the F rating. I mean, if you look at any of the streaming platforms now, it seems to me that it wouldn't be out of place finding an F rating symbol on on their films as well. Absolutely. And, And perhaps it's only a matter of time before they add it. So there are, because more and more organizations are using the F rating, uh, as it gains momentum and recognition, it's just an easy way for people to select films where the storyteller is female. So yes, it it could and obviously should be used on those platforms. And it's the funny thing, I mean, I'm being naive and perhaps, you know, slightly kind of uh, fantasist about it, but it's funny that it's, hopefully it's designed for obsolescence, that eventually you won't need an F rating symbol. It's always been my ambition for the F rating that it becomes unnecessary, that we have 50% of films that we see are told by and about women. It seems ridiculous that we're in 2018 having to have this conversation and that we're not already there. I I constantly, optimistically can't believe that we're not there yet um, and that we still have a huge way to go. But yes, I do hope it becomes obsolete because I don't get paid to do it. (laughs) 